holy digestive fun times, dudes. So, um, small intestine. I think that I read today that the small intestine is 20 feet long. It's longer than that in a, or it's longer in a dead body than in a living body. In a living body, there is some, um, the whole digestive tube has some tone because of the smooth muscle layer that surrounds it. So once the digestive system dies, it actually kind of stretches out a little bit longer, but still, it's ridiculous. It's like, dude, 20 feet, 30 feet, whatever, any number of feet. Like 20 inches I could imagine fitting in my gut, but um, 20 feet? Are you kidding? That's a lot. So there are three parts of the small intestine. The first part is the duodenum. So the pyloric region of the stomach empties food substances, mush, into the duodenum. The duodenum is not very long. It's about 10 inches long. And it's the, the main site for um, digestion, chemical digestion of substances. And so there's a lot of juices. Ow. I just hit my electron on, on my binder. There's lots of juices being secreted into the duodenum. After we secrete all those juices, we're secreting um, lipases. We're secreting proteases. We're secreting um, different kinds of sugar digesters. And, dude, you just sent in, ugh, you just sent in um, pH 1 stomach acid into your tender little uh, small intestine, you better adjust the pH. So we also secrete bicarbonate from the pancreas. A whole bunch of stuff gets secreted into the duodenum. It gets mixed. It sits. It does its thing. And as the stuff moves through the tube and into the next part of the tube, which is called the jejunum, jejunum, and the jejunum is longer. The jejunum is seven and a half feet long, whatever. I don't really care about these numbers. I just think it's super interesting to think about them. The jejunum is where absorption happens. So duodenum, we're having secretion and digestion. Jejunum, we're absorbing what we um, digested. And in the last section, the ileum is the same. And the ileum apparently is 10.8 feet long. That's a lot of feet. Now, um, ileum, you know, you have an ileum in your pelvic girdle. It's a bone, and it's spelled with an I. The ileum in your gut is spelled with an E. And I remember that because ileum is where you eat. So make sure you spell ileum correct because it will be wrong if you put an I in that space. Ileum has a majority of absorption also happening here. Now, if we are, most of the um, small intestine is about absorption. So there are a couple of things that are true about the structure of the small intestine that help with this. And these things have to do with increasing the surface area of the tube itself. There's four ways that you can increase the surface area, and we're going to look at them again in more detail, but I'm going to list them out for you now. You can have a long tube, increase the length of the tube. A big long tube. I mean, dude, 20 feet long, yes, that's a long tube. The longer the tube, the more surface area you have to absorb 
the nutrients that you need. If you can imagine if, if you just went directly like from your duodenum 10 inches down to your large intestine, you wouldn't have very much time to absorb what you are um, digesting, and really you'd probably have some pretty gnarly diarrhea. So uh, thank you for the length because that gives us time to absorb the nutrients out of there. We also have um, these things called circular folds, and these are a phenomenon where you can imagine the tube, hello, the tube of the digestive track, and then there are as, if I'm looking down the tube at you, there are these places where the tube actually constricts and then comes back out again and constricts and comes back out again, and there are these big circular folds in the tube itself, which you can imagine actually functions to increase the surface area. And somewhere I have a picture of that for you, whether it's today, I actually can't remember. You also have these little structures called villi, which are finger-like projections. So you have circular folds, and on your circular folds you have all of these finger-like projections that burst out into the lumen of the small intestine, again, increasing the surface area. And then on individual cells, you have things called microvilli, and those are projections on an individual cell. So you have, like, a cell with projections, which increases the surface area for absorption, and then those cells make up these projections, and then those projections are on these circular fold projections on a freaking long, long tube that's crammed into your belly like that. Small intestine isn't messing around. Um, we're going to talk about the accessory organs that actually secrete stuff into the duodenum in like a time and a half or whatever, the next, next lecture. <laughs> right there. We're going to talk about accessory organs. So we'll talk about the pancreas and what they secrete and the liver, what it secretes. Um, there's only one pancreas, so the, what the pancreas secretes. Oh, dear. How about if we talk about the large intestine and figure out what it does?